Today on Bridge City News, Jeffrey Epstein, the multi-millionaire and accused sex trafficker, was found dead in his Manhattan jail cell this morning. Law enforcement officials believe it was a suicide. Ontario Premier Doug Ford is facing criticism for his harsh comments that people with mental illness who commit serious crimes should stay in jail. And at least 62 people are dead and 70 more injured after a damaged tanker truck exploded in eastern Tanzania. Your nation. Your province. Your southern Alberta. From the heart of Lethbridge, it's Bridge City News with Paul Arthur. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Lethbridge Fire and Emergency Services responded to a residential house fire in the 700 block of 12th A Street North yesterday afternoon. Officials say three stations were called to the home and quickly extinguished the flames coming from the front of the house. Investigators determined the blaze started under the front deck and was caused by the improper disposal of smoking materials. It's the second fire in two days caused by improper disposal of smoking materials after an apartment balcony fire on the west side Thursday. No injuries were reported and damage is estimated at $100,000. The town of Colhurst had a great turnout for their annual Miners' Day celebration today. Despite the cool, damp weather, there were plenty of family events taking place in this town with a rich mining history. Uh, Colhurst primarily was a, a, um, was a mining community. and We produced a, a, a tremendous amount of coal here way, in, way back in the 1930s. Miner's Day has been going on um, way before my time. Uh, I would guess uh, approximately way back in the 60s. We are having a parade this morning at 11 o'clock, uh, um, and, and, and hopefully we get a lot of uh, uh, um, entries from all the small communities around here. Um, after, after the parade, we'll have um, a, a beer garden, as well as um, you know, we'll serve hot dogs and, and hamburgers and stuff like that. And then we have a tremendous amount of activities for, um, for some of the younger kids. Canadian Blood Services has announced the selection of Lethbridge to become one of three dedicated plasma donation sites across the country. Plasma is often in short supply and is the blood component used to make specialized medicines from proteins contained in human plasma. The first standalone plasma collection site is expected to open in Sudbury, Ontario this spring, followed by Lethbridge in the fall of 2020 and then Kelowna in 2021. Robert John Shepard was sentenced to six years in prison yesterday. The 34-year-old Lethbridge man was convicted of eight offenses, including assault with a weapon, stemming from an incident back in April of 2018 when he fired multiple rifle shots into the house that his girlfriend and family were in. Shepard has yet to face several other charges, including sexual assault and criminal harassment related to another matter. The Waterton Knapweed Rodeo has been postponed until next week. Parks Canada decided the potential of severe thunderstorms was too great of a risk to volunteers. By the way, the rodeo is actually an annual weed pulling event to curb the spread of knapweed, an invasive plant that can take over native landscapes by releasing toxins from its roots. Volunteers can register online for next Saturday and will receive free entrance to the park as well as a free barbecue lunch. Regina-based Farm Credit Canada is providing $100,000 to expand a mental health support system for farmers. The FCC says it has reached a partnership with the Do More Agriculture Foundation to expand a network of mental health first aid responders. Last year, the two organizations started a pilot project in 12 communities, training more than 230 rural residents. It says the goal now is to set up workshops in two dozen communities to train over 400 first responders. The Manitoba New Democrats are responding to the Green Party's election platform that was released yesterday. The Greens are calling for a rising carbon tax, free public transit and a guaranteed basic income to fight poverty. The New Democrats say the Greens have some interesting ideas, but claim the NDP is the only party that has released a fully costed plan to fight climate change, keep life affordable, create good jobs and fix health care. Manitobans go to the polls on September 10th. Ontario's Premier said Friday that people with mental illness who commit crimes should be in jail, calling a patient who had been detained at a hospital for killing his roommate an animal. Doug Ford teed off for a second time on the case of Jabin Kong, who was found not criminally responsible for killing his roommate with a meat cleaver in 2014. Kong was an inpatient at a mental health facility in Toronto 
but failed to return from an unaccompanied trip into the community in July. And I'm supposed to be a bleeding heart saying, oh, let's take care of them? I have zero sympathy for these people. I have sympathy for these poor families. Just imagine the pain they're going through right now. So to answer your question, no, we have to have tougher laws in this country. We've got to put these people away. And if they have mental health issues, they can be dealt with in jail. I'm passionate about helping people with mental illness. This guy should have never been let loose, in my opinion. But that's where the federal laws have to be a lot tougher. So that, that, that's my answer. And uh, no, I don't regret uh, uh, calling him what I called him, because that's exactly what, what he is. Does he need help? Why is he walking the streets right now? Why is he free if he needs help? Our system is broken. We're going to hold him accountable. There's 10 people that walked out the doors of KMH. They caught a few, but the rest are walking around. This is a government that has failed on the early intervention piece. They have failed on keeping patients and the public safe. And then they've also failed families who are who are dealing with violence. They've defunded uh, resources for those families. So for him to just use the language around calling individuals who suffer from mental illness animals is something that I never thought I would ever hear a Premier say in the province of Ontario. A woman from Quebec City is fighting for her life in hospital after police say she was intentionally set on fire. Officers are searching for a suspect in what investigators describe as the attempted murder of a woman in her 20s last night. A police spokesman says the young woman suffered major injuries to her face, back and hands, and she is in critical condition. Police say the victim knew her attacker, but wouldn't elaborate on their relationship. The RCMP is facing calls for transparency as it continues to investigate the motive behind a string of killings in northern British Columbia. Mounties have remained tight-lipped about why two young men from Vancouver Island may have killed a tourist couple and a botany professor last month. Police say they are confident that two bodies found in northern Manitoba last week are those of the two suspected killers. Legal experts argue that the Mounties should share more about what they know while balancing the privacy rights of those who died and their families. The federal government reports that Syrian refugees brought to Canada under a landmark resettlement program are gradually integrating into Canadian society. A study from Citizenship, Immigration and Refugees Canada suggests just over half of them are working, while another 23 percent are looking for jobs. But their salaries continue to lag behind other groups and many are still turning to food banks for support. The study is the final look at outcomes for the nearly 40,000 Syrians who arrived in Canada between 2015 and 2016. Multi-millionaire and accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein was found unresponsive in his cell this morning at the Manhattan Correctional Center and was pronounced dead in hospital. Law enforcement officials believe it was a suicide. A little over two weeks ago, he had been found on the floor of his cell with bruises on his neck and had been put on a suicide watch, which raises many questions as to why this happened. Cameron Lindsay, a former U.S. prison warden, says Epstein should have been under direct and constant supervision. The city of Modesto, California, has denied a request from the National Straight Pride Coalition to hold a straight pride rally at a local park. Opponents argued the rally would promote hatred of LGBTQ people and minorities. City spokesman Thomas Reeves says the permit request was denied over safety concerns because the group lost its liability insurance. However, the rally will be allowed at a downtown plaza if the group proves it has insurance by Tuesday. At least 62 people are dead and 70 more were injured after a damaged tanker truck exploded in eastern Tanzania. It happened early this morning in the town of Morogoro. Witnesses say a large crowd had gathered around the tanker, with many trying to siphon away fuel when the truck burst into flames. A road safety expert, Henry Bantu, with the Safe Speed Foundation, is calling for local leaders to do more to educate people on the risks of siphoning fuel, which apparently is quite common in East Africa. Protesters held two new marches in Hong Kong today in defiance of a ban on demonstrations. The territory is in its ninth week of demonstrations that began in response to a proposed extradition law. Police fired tear gas at the demonstrators who are calling for the resignation of the territory's leader, Chief Executive Carrie Lam, and an investigation into complaints of abuses by police. 
Recapping one of our top stories this hour, Jeffrey Epstein, the multimillionaire and accused sex trafficker, was found dead in his Manhattan jail cell this morning. Law enforcement officials believe it was a suicide. And a look at weekend weather. Periods of rain overnight with a low of 10. The rain should end tomorrow morning, then cloudy with showers returning later in the afternoon, along with a southwest wind gusting from 20 to 40 and a high of 21 degrees. Research is showing that the millennial generation has been leaving the church in significant numbers. But church expert Alex McFarland believes there is a way to reconnect with them. Hal Roberts has that interview coming up next. But first, here's a look at what's happening in and around your community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. Southern Alberta Men's Ministry is hosting a barbecue and games day for men in the Lethbridge area on Saturday, August 24th at the John Martin Picnic Area in Pavan Park, beginning at 4 p.m. Enjoy an afternoon of hilarious, fun, and delicious food. Then hear an inspiring message from Jerry Pullman. Tickets are two for $10. Buy one for yourself and a friend. For more information and tickets, contact Leslie at 403-327-4422. And follow Southern Alberta Men's Ministry on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Devil's Coulee Dinosaur and Heritage Museum, located in Warner, Alberta, is now open until September 2nd. Take a tour of the Dinosaur Gallery, Heritage Exhibits, and Military Displays. Visit Charlie the Baby Dinosaur and see an actual nesting site. For more information, visit devilcoolie.com. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar.